On August 22, 1998, a unique seismological experiment was conducted at the former Soviet nuclear test site in eastern Kazakhstan. In this experiment, codenamed Omega-1, a 100-ton chemical explosive blast was used both to test technologies for monitoring the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, or CTBT, and to calibrate a portion of the CTBT's international monitoring system. This experiment has demonstrated the feasibility of fielding large-scale calibration explosions, which are specified as a confidence-building measure in the CTBT Treaty Protocol. It has also provided important benchmark data on the performance of the international monitoring system and on regional seismic wave propagation and event discrimination. The experiment was conducted with support from the United States-funded Cooperative Threat Reduction Program in Kazakhstan, under which the nuclear test tunnels and boreholes at the former nuclear test site are being closed and sealed. This program is being managed by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency and implemented by the National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan. The Defense Threat Reduction Agency, in cooperation with the Department of Energy, has been using the tunnel and borehole closure programs at the former Soviet nuclear test site as a foundation on which to field cost-effective research experiments designed to improve U.S. capabilities to monitor and verify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Because nuclear tests generate seismic waves that can be recorded at large distances and have distinctive characteristics, Seismology plays a major role in nuclear test monitoring. The 1998 test at Degelin was specifically designed to test CTBT monitoring technologies by fielding a calibration explosion, one of several treaty-defined confidence-building measures. Also completed in 1998 was an additional research experiment designed to improve the capability to determine the depth of burial of an explosion from the subtle details of the seismic signal. The calibration explosion experiment of August 1998 was fielded in an existing tunnel in Degelin Mountain, once the most active of Soviet underground nuclear test sites. Of the 181 nuclear test tunnels that were excavated into the flanks of the mountain, Tunnel 214, one of many unused tunnels, was chosen for the experiment. The tunnel is located on the western side of the mountain and radiation measurements confirmed that there had been no significant radioactive contamination at that site. The tunnel, which was excavated in the late 1980s, has a complex internal structure. The most internal drift was selected as the best available location for emplacing and confining the planned 100-ton explosive charge. In the winter of 1998, the entire tunnel complex was geologically mapped and sampled by the Institute of Geophysical Research of Kazakhstan's National Nuclear Center. These maps were used to select locations for the instruments that were used to monitor the blast near its source to fine-tune plans for confining or stemming the explosives, and to evaluate damage to the tunnel caused by the subsequent explosion. A number of different technologies were used to monitor the explosion, both to characterize it as a seismological impulse or source of seismic waves, and to determine how that impulse propagated to different distances. A series of eight gauge packages were emplaced in boreholes that were drilled in the distance range of 10 to 43 meters from the explosion chamber. These packages, composed of triplets of stress, particle velocity and acceleration gauges, fitted into the same cylindrical canister, would record the rock motions that would occur very near the blast. In addition, special cortex cables analogous to those used on the U.S. and Soviet nuclear joint verification experiments more than a decade ago, were placed in the high explosive to monitor its burn velocity. The explosion was also recorded on two video cameras deployed inside the tunnel, one just outside the tunnel portal, 
one inside the instrumentation trailer, one on the hillside focused on ground zero, and one at the viewing area. On the Earth's surface above the tunnel and at distances out to many hundred miles, local and regional seismometers were deployed to record the explosion. A local network of seven stations was deployed to record the seismic signals both immediately above the blast, at the tunnel portal, and at distances out to 10 miles. At larger distances, the explosion would be recorded on the stations of the Kazakhstan Regional Seismic Network, as well as at 12 portable stations that were deployed by the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University just for this experiment. An explosion of this type would be recorded on the regional and global stations of the prototype international monitoring system as that system becomes operational. Data from the operational stations in this network are already linked to the prototype IDC in Roslyn, Virginia, and the entire system will eventually be linked to the international data center for the CTBTO in Vienna, Austria. The PIDC routinely analyzes the raw seismic monitoring data to determine seismic event locations and characteristics, such as seismic magnitude, as a part of an effort to develop a suitable seismic monitoring system for the CTBTO. The Tunnel 214 explosion therefore served as an opportunity for this operation to test its procedures and results against an event of known location, time, and size. In addition to the seismic wave measurements, acoustic measurements of sound waves in the atmosphere were monitored by two portable infrasound stations that were deployed for this experiment. Large surface and shallow underground explosions produce infrasonic waves in the upper atmosphere, and 60 infrasound monitoring stations are called for in the CTBT to monitor for atmospheric disturbances. The Tunnel 214 explosion was a target of opportunity for testing the performance of infrasound instrumentation on a relatively low amplitude signal from a deep underground explosion. The 100-ton chemical explosive charge consisted of stacked bags of a granulated form of TNT known as granulatol. To accommodate this large amount of explosives in a compact volume, the 3 meter by 3 meter tunnel was slightly excavated to a 5.5 meter cube to form the explosives chamber and a steel bulkhead was constructed on the portal side to complete the explosives emplacement room. Prior to loading the explosives, small test explosions used to calibrate the local geology were detonated in holes drilled into the chamber wall. The explosives were then loaded into the chamber along with the detonator and the cortex monitoring cables, and the chamber was sealed into the rock with a stemming complex consisting of two massive concrete plugs separated by crushed rock. To emplace the near-field sensors and the cortex cables, a suite of nine boreholes were drilled horizontally toward the explosives chamber. The instruments were loaded into these boreholes and cemented into place with a grout that was designed to closely match the rock in terms of its density and seismic wave velocity. Cables from the gauge packages in the instrumentation boreholes were routed out the tunnel to a nearby instrumentation trailer located at the portal where the data would be recorded. The gauge packages were checked continuously in the 48 hours prior to the test. On the day of the test, access to the tunnel was restricted. The Kazakhstan Explosives Engineering and Safety Team enabled the detonating devices at the lockbox located near the explosives chamber and sealed the tunnel complex at the concrete plug. The test area was cleared for all but essential personnel and a detonation point was established on a nearby ridge. From the viewing area, the gathering of scientists, engineers, test site managers and workers, and representatives of the local media had a clear view of the mountainside, the tunnel portal, and the instrumentation trailer. The explosives were detonated at 12 noon local time on August 22, 1998. 
despite earlier concerns that the gaseous explosion byproducts might vent to the surface, there were no visible signs of containment failure or hydrofracturing, and the stemming plugs appeared to contain the majority of the explosion byproducts to the innermost portions of the tunnel complex. After the blast, gas samples were taken near the tunnel entrance to look for hazardous explosion byproducts such as carbon monoxide. Once it was deemed safe, the instrumentation team then returned to the portal recording trailer to collect and analyze the data from the sensors deployed inside the tunnel and to provide a quick look assessment of the data return and quality. The preliminary results indicated a data return of over 90%, a phenomenal result considering the remote test location. The Tunnel 214 explosion was exceptionally well recorded on all of the instrumentation that was deployed to measure the test environment, and the seismic signals were easily detected and located by the Prototype International Monitoring System for the CTBTO. Seismologically, the event had a magnitude of 3.8 and was recorded on seismic arrays as far away as Alaska and Africa. The Prototype International Data Center accurately located the event at Deglin Mountain with a relatively small location uncertainty. This represents a significant improvement in location accuracy in the one year period since the Balapan depth of burial explosions occurred. The event was also well recorded on the regional stations of the Kazakhstan Seismic Network and on the local and regional portable seismic stations that were deployed. This means that high quality seismic records were obtained from this event for an extremely broad distance range, from a few meters to over 6,000 kilometers. Data from the Cortex system indicated that the explosives detonated instantaneously and completely. The instrumentation deployed in the rock near the explosion will provide benchmark data on the seismic source region that can be used for theoretical modeling of seismic propagation from an explosive source. As noted, this event provides key data on the calibration of a portion of the International Seismic Network that will be used to verify the CTBT. In addition, the test demonstrates clearly the procedures required to carry out a calibration test in a remote area, and thus it can be used as a standard for other calibration tests done elsewhere in the world. The 1998 Omega-1 experiment was remarkable for its high degree of cooperation, which was initially established through the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program between the United States and Kazakhstan. By leveraging this cooperation in conjunction with ongoing dismantlement activities, a diverse team of individuals with differing knowledge and skills from different companies or government agencies and from two countries was able to ensure the success of this experiment. The Defense Threat Reduction Agency gratefully acknowledges this support. DTRA is planning a second large-scale experimental tunnel closure, Omega-2, for the summer of 1999 and is considering an Omega-3 test in 2000. Like the Tunnel 214 test, the 1999 experiment will contribute to the calibration of key seismic stations and improve the capability to monitor explosion-like events under the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty.